Okay, Carter Rubin, big congratulations. You just won season 19 of The Voice and Gwen Stefani was your coach. This You are her first winner of all time. Yeah. Uh, my name is Marcus James Dixon. I'm here with Denton Davidson. And we just wanna know what was that moment like when the confetti is coming down on you and everyone's cheering? And then what happens after the cameras stop rolling? Like, where do you go next? Uh, the confetti and all of that big production stuff just felt absolutely surreal because I've been watching The Voice for years and I see all of the winners and the, how they react. And I'm like joking around with my mom, like, imagine, imagine. And now I'm like actually one of those people, which is completely insane and after the camera stopped rolling um a lot of air hugs <laughs> and then me and Gwen went to go do an interview at press and universal and uh the whole night just felt like I was on cloud nine million it was insane and you're the youngest male contestant to ever win the show so on, on that record but you're also the first winner from Team Gwen. So how was it to give her, you know, that sort of gift on your way out? I'm sure she was excited as well. Yes, I. if I had one reason to win, it was definitely for her because she's such a phenomenal coach and somehow she's never won before, which is crazy because she helped her artists so much, like behind the scenes especially. And so I really just wanted to win for her and I'm so happy I could give her her first win because she so deserves it and you were never in the bottom so you never had to to fight in the instant save but I'm just curious what would your instant save song have been I'm sure you had something planned ready to go yes everyone had a instant song save ready to go if I were to be in the instant save round it would have been praying by Kesha okay which I'm kind of happy I didn't have to sing it because it's a pretty big song, but um, I was lucky enough to keep advancing. And, you know, back at the beginning of the process, this year was obviously different because all of the COVID-19 restrictions. Yes. Um, do you think if life would have been, you know, normal for you at the time, would you have still auditioned or did you actually have more time to sort of think about trying out for this process I would have still auditioned I actually my first audition was in Boston and it was February right before the world like shut down so I was planning on auditioning regardless and the world just kind of paused for a little while so I kind of lost hope like what if this isn't happening what if it just all stops and then I was lucky enough to be flown out to my blind audition um, in LA for over the summer with all the safety precautions in place and the voice crew did an incredible job at making sure all the artists were healthy and safe and we could all do what we came to do. I was just re-watching your blind audition and I forgot that John Legend turned first and then there was like a long time before Gwen turned. So do you remember what you're thinking at the time? Are you thinking like, oh, I'm going to be on, on Team Legend. You know, he's the only one that turned. And then Gwen turns right before. Yeah, you. that's a, that's literally exactly what I was thinking. I was like, I was like in the middle of the song, John Legend was turned. I was like, this is amazing. One chair is all I need. A Team <laughs> Legend, let's go. And then Gwen turned around and I was like, oh my God. Because I had my heart set on Gwen from day one. I admire her so much and her music is incredible and I've just always wanted to work with her and so um I just definitely I definitely lucked out and what <laughs> made you choose Before You Go by Louis Capaldi as your blind audition song um I love Louis Capaldi and I love the song's meaning it can mean um like it might sound like a breakup but for me it's about like not missing the chance to be there for someone and like it's okay let your walls come down like I'll help you like that's kind of what the song means to me and so it's just a very powerful song that I that I've always wanted to sing and he came and performed that at the finale and yes, Julia he did. Came and performed you say what you also sang I mean yes. I think you just needed Mariah Carey and Kermit the Frog to show up and everyone that you sang would have been there right uh, <laughs> so did you get to meet either of them or was it just too hectic or uh unfortunately we were in our holding room so i didn't meet no. them but i i saw their performances online and they were so incredible one of the best things about these shows is that the 
the contestants sometimes just create bonds for life with with each other. Who for do you sure. think you're gonna be friends with, you know, five, 10 years from now? Everyone. <laughs> like the older artists are such incredible role models for me and I have such respect for them and I've gotten to learn from them and it's been an incredible honor. And then the ones that have been more my age, um, Bailey, Lauren, JC and Mia from Worth the Wait, Skylar, Loria, um, those are all like the minors um, that mm -hmm. we all had our moms with us. And I said Lauren and um, they were just like my closest friends throughout the entire experience. And I was so lucky to have met them and I have a feeling I'm gonna be friends with them forever. You know, and here at Gold Derby, we have a prediction center. So we're predicting, we have people predicting all the time, who do you think is going to win the voice? And we have these odds that go up and down. And it seemed like they were kind of shifting throughout the season. Yeah. But where, when the momentum changed and then you held after that was Rainbow Connection. So how did you come up with, with that song? Um, and how did you and Gwen decide that that was the right choice for you? It was actually a song that Gwen came up with herself um, and it ended up being a really good song for me. I just wanted to make it really raw and pure and intimate and broken down. And I think Gwen really loved it. She was moved to tears. She told me it was perfect. And I just remember being super proud of myself. It's so funny because I've never liked Rainbow Connection before until I heard your version. And then I like, really? and then I, my ears like perked up. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I actually like this song now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always sang that song when I was little. So I, I kind of got to relive uh, my glory days. And you dedicated that to your brother, right? Yeah. What was his reaction after you won the show last night? What, what did oh, he excited? He was he was, I FaceTimed him. He was so happy. He was screaming. He was like, you won the voice, you won the voice. And I, and I said, I was like, we won the voice. And he's like, oh, we won the voice. It was, he's been so proud and really understanding throughout this entire journey. And I'm so grateful for him. And your grandfather was in <clears throat> the Americans. Um, and I believe he got sort of his start in music around the same age that you yes. have. So yeah. Uh, what does he think about you doing all of this? He is so proud of me. I was FaceTiming him last night, same reaction, screaming, crying. Um, he's just, you. he could tell he's really proud of me and I'm proud to be his grandson. And we've always sang together and we always will. And I'm so happy that I got the singing gene from him. And uh, I am just really blessed. A lot of times on The Voice, they, they ask back the winners to, to help mentor the new people, like in the blind auditions. If, if they were to ask you back, is that something you would want to do? Oh my, absolutely. Are you kidding? That would be like a dream of mine because this has been literally the time of my life and I could kind of go back and relive it. And I would want to give the people in season 20 advice that I got. And I would just love Oh, that'd be so awesome. I never even thought of that. And so you're 15. Uh, you just won The Voice. What kind of album do you want to make? Or what or what do you want to do next? What's next for you? Do you just go back to school? <laughs> um, I mean, I do, but that's not it. Uh, Gwen told me that it's time for me to start writing songs, and I completely agree. I have a few songs I'm working on, and I plan on getting in a studio and recording them all, and I'm really excited to put my music out there. I love the male pop contemporary lane, like Shawn Mendes, Luis Capaldi, Harry Styles. Um, that's any, the kind of album I want to make. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Do you have any dream duets? Um, I'd love to do a, do a duet with Ariana Grande because she's my celebrity crush mm -hmm. and I love her a lot, like way too much. It's unhealthy. I'm kind of obsessed with her. Um, and I would just, she's like an idol of mine and I'd absolutely love to sing with her one day. Well, Carter, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Big no problem on your win. And before we go, is there anything you want to say to your fans who helped make this dream happen? uh they're more like my friends my supporters they're actually called the rubies um i thank you all so much 
for all of the support and your voting and you guys really came through for me. And I'm, I, if it wasn't COVID, I would hug each and every one of you because I'm so blessed and grateful to have you guys in my life and you're all so awesome. And you're the reason I won. Thank you.